everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are here to talk about the 2010s. It was a interesting era and certainly a rough one for the rom-coms. There weren't that many, but there were some good ones that stuck out and we're going to talk about them. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Terry's here. Hello. How are you doing? Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I could yeah. complain, but I won't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's interesting because uh, this was a time when most of the like rom-coms were, you know, to streaming or were kind of yeah. a, a traditional. There weren't that many like big budget rom-coms in the theaters. Hardly any. Hardly any. And this yeah. was a tough because I dislike a lot that people really like oh. and, and then there's tons of like bad ones you know yeah like Ooh. i mean i forgive those because at least they were attempting to keep the genre alive and and do it but it's rough yeah this is a yeah. rough decade <laughs> really i was pulling is. my hair doing this rachel i didn't know where to go <laughs> i didn't know what counted this was hard yeah yeah it really, it really if i drank i i I'd be drunk <laughs> during this podcast right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, we asked also our patrons what they would pick, and so we got some uh, we got some insight from them, and uh, and it was interesting to see the ones that uh, were on a lot of their lists. Uh, so, if you want to be a part of these ranking episodes, then make sure you check out the Patreon. It's the best way you can help us. And uh, let's just dive in and let's let's talk about what do you have at number 10? I have uh, I don't know how people feel about this movie, but I have Life As We Know It uh, starring Catherine Heigl and Josh Duhamel. Uh-huh. I think it's uh, your standard um, enemies to lovers, I guess. I mean, the two of them, uh, their best friends get married. They're the godparents to their daughter. Uh, the parents die in a car accident and they become the guardian of this child. And it's the struggle to whether or not they raise her and he's got to grow up. And it's a very formulaic, uh, all sorts of tropes to the rom-com, but I think it works. And I enjoyed this more than I expected to. And I'm not sure it's that beloved or that remembered. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not, but I don't know. It just, it did it for me. It's the happiest. Uh, <laughs> my friends <laughs> both died in a horrible, horrific car accident. That- yes, but we found love. <laughs> we, yeah, we found and love. It all worked place. out, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cue yeah. the casket. Uh, the casket song. We found love in a new place. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like you know, <laughs> there's a lot of rom coms like this, but this one did it yeah. for me again. I mean, I will. This always- is a tough decade. <laughs> yeah, I will always champion uh, busybody matchmakers from beyond the grave. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. it's I mean, it's ludicrous. Who would do this? But but it's it true. it uh, it's entertaining. It's entertaining, it's and true. they are really good together. That's another thing too. Don't agree to be a godparent if this is not the position you want to be in. <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm just saying. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, it's the whole point of the designation, right? <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not that big of a Josh Dumal fan. Like, um, uh-huh. I so many years, but I've known him since his soap days. Like, you know, watched his stuff. But I think he works in this movie better than other things that he's done. You know. Yeah. Well, he really won me over uh, in one of my picks that we'll talk about. Um, yeah. That uh, uh, that. All right, well, I, maybe I'll just go for it as my number 12. Um, for me, number 12 is uh, Love, Simon. I just loved, I really loved Love, Simon. I I mean, it has some uh, some more emotional elements that might people might not think of as a rom-com, but I think it counts. And it's, it's just got such a big heart, this movie. And Josh Duhamel is so good as the dad and i loved jennifer carter and uh the scene when when simon comes out and just how loving he is and kind and um but authentic i felt like um i don't know this is just i think it's such a good movie love simon it's great 
Have you seen I it? I haven't actually seen it, no. Oh, And for it's some so strange, good. all, for some strange reason, I thought this was like a 2020 movie. It's older than No. that? Yeah, it's 2018. Oh, I see. I was, I thought for some strange reason, I thought this was in the uh, the 2020s. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm confusing it with the show that they had. Oh, yeah. Love, Victor. Yeah, that Yeah. might be where I got it. That's why I was like, oh, I had time to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and... I really recommend it. It's such a sweet show. I mean, such it's, I really recommend it. It is such a sweet movie uh, about this kid who is, is gay and it doesn't is afraid to come out to his his friends and family and uh, and i don't know it all to me it feels very authentic Yeah. It works, yeah. and yeah it really does and it's just like such a sweet family film and uh and the 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 bully is a lot uh that's the only thing that boy Yeah. this guy's like serial killer in training he is just absolutely terrible but um but You know, aside from that, he's uh, it's 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 really good, I think. Uh, but uh, what do you have at eleven? Oh, I might get a lot of WTF uh, reactions for this, but I went for it. I picked Despicable Me too. Oh, Now, yeah, hear me out, okay, Rachel. yeah, yeah. I have no lie. I think I've seen this movie over a hundred times. When my niece and nephew were little, their favorite movies were the first two Despicable Me movies. And, and I took care of them while their parents went to work. Greatest years of my life, a wonderful joy to do so. But you know how kids are. They can rewatch movies countless times and never be bothered. And it was always like, we want to watch a movie. So I, I always have to ask them, we want to watch Mr. Gru. And I would be like, okay, you want to watch a vector or a macho? And they would, you know, choose a macho more. But I think, I don't know if I've been programmed uh, through the years of seeing this so many times, but you know, there's a love story going on with Gru and Lucy with a spy mystery and Margot has that teenage crush or whatever with the villain's son. Yeah, that's true. And I think it counts and Hey. I might be the, I might be brainwashed still over this movie, but there was a time where I could, I remember dialogue from this movie. So I was like, I'm going to go for it. I'm picking Despicable Me too. I like this franchise. I know people have their qualms on it, but like, it's it's Yeah. pretty, you know, El Macho I riding that shark. I don't know. It gets yeah. me. <laughs> It's 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 up and down for me. I the minions are a lot for me, and I really Yeah. disliked the first minions movie, but then the second one Yeah. This I actually one is liked. better. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah, same. I did not think I would. But I think it, the minions at their best uh capture the spirit of sort of silent comedy. The Right. you know, because obviously they don't speak. Yes. And so like They and I think that whole scene in the second Minions movie when when uh, they're they're the on the plane Oh, that yes. scene is hilarious and to me that Yeah. like made the made the whole movie worth it I thought that was such a, a great sequence and uh, I don't know I, I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would um, it, but I really didn't like the Despicable Me three with uh, what's this uh, Oh, the brother. It's not, what is it, Drew or Gru? Uh, it's, Uh, whatever it is. it's, I know his brother. yeah, Like, terrible. That one was bad. So it, it's very up, up and down. it's But we're so getting funny another because, one because yeah, they all make a billion dollars. I know. It's so funny because the, my ne niece and nephew are, are, are is like a, my niece is a tween. My nephew is a teen. And we Yeah. still went as a family to go see this, you know, the minions too. Yeah. So it, it still holds them to some Yeah. like Yeah. nostalgic And that's why they're so delight, successful. but I mean, yeah. unbelievable. But like, I mean, if Gru can find love, you know, in this big of me too, I think it counts. <laughs> Yeah, hey. Uh, so my number 11 is a, a movie I feel like has kind of been forgotten, but I, I really did enjoy it. It's Isn't It Romantic? Uh, this is a kind of a parody, a spoof of uh, Oh, rom-coms yes, yes. uh, starring Rebel Wilson. And uh, she hates rom-coms. And, <laughs> and one morning she wakes up and she's in a rom-com. And I think that Hallmark viewers will particularly enjoy Totally. this movie because like they, they really lean into a lot of the tropes of 
the uh of the hallmark rom-com like the the fake flowers that are everywhere you know in, <laughs> around and, and uh like people like bursting into song and and uh and uh i think that liam hensworth is really good and then oh Adam yeah Divine, he's really good and <laughs> totally uh, it's just yeah I just think it's it's really fun. Yeah, I, I have I, this on my list as well, a little uh, a little bit higher, but yeah, yeah. I think my favorite part of that movie is like when uh, Liam Hemsworth comes out in the towel and she's made up fantastically in the bed, and she's yeah. like, "Oh yeah," and she tries to repeat it because it always cuts off for the good part. Yeah, and she's right. like, "No, no, let's try this again <laughs> to see if she can keep going on," but it keeps cutting off. Right. <laughs> It's PG. It's a. I'm not only in a rom com, but it's PG thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> oh, and when they're eating ice cream, and he's like, "Who likes the pistachio? That's an old person's like flavor." And I was like, "I love pistachio." What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I feel like a bunch of my friends that aren't like particularly into Hallmark didn't really like it as much. Yeah, but I think our space it it it's especially like. And it's got such um, a sweet message at yeah, the end of it, too, which true. I appreciate. And I've yeah. never liked Rebel Wilson as much as I have in this movie. Yeah, same. I just think she was really good in it. And, I mean, and everybody I love, involved in it. I absolutely love Fat Amy in Pitch Perfect. And <laughs> and I thought about those movies, you know, in, in these lists. But I was like, it's, not, it's more just a flat-out comedy than a rom-com. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, but I love the first Pitch Perfect. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. And but uh certainly would be on my list of my favorite comedies, but the, yeah. the sequels haven't been as good. The third one I hate so much. But <laughs> uh but uh, I do love Fat Amy as a character. I, I so she was always I was always a pretty big fan. Yeah. But, but she's at her best in this. Really, yeah, really, totally. really it's worth a watch for yeah. sure. Yeah. It surprised me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you have next? A movie you don't like. I have Destination Wedding oh, with yeah. Keanu Reeves <laughs> and Winona Ryder. I just love it because the movie is essentially just them. And they're like two miserably horrible people going to this wedding. You know, it's her ex her ex fiance and his brother. And they just complain through the whole entire thing. And, and they are so over the top. But they, you know, these over the top miserable people find love. And I yeah. think... I do like their chemistry, like Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder have worked mm-hmm. together many times before. And I don't know. I like this yeah. movie. It's not for everybody, but it works for me. Yeah, it's definitely not for me, but I'm glad you enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. All right. Well, my number 10 is, uh, is there was the battle between the friends with benefits movies, uh, in, uh, in, uh, 20, 2011. And a bunch of my movies are from 2011, but, um, uh, but yeah, there was the battle and I am team no strings attached, not friends with benefits. Uh, I, I mean, they're both Fine, but I I really like No Strings Attached. I just think it is really funny, and it's got such a great cast. Not just uh, you know Ashton Kutcher and Natalie Portman, but Mindy Kaling is in this. Greta Gerwig's in it. Like Bell, uh, Jake Johnson. It's got a great cast and uh, supporting uh, players. And 
I just, I think I love it. I love it for their banter and the relationship and everything. But my favorite part is the fact that he's like trying to be all like s- sweet and considerate and whatever. And it makes a, uh, it makes a period mixed CD <laughs> <laughs> to be like in, you know, connect with women or whatever. And, uh, and it's got like bleeding love on there and <laughs> Like driving through the city, like listening to his period <laughs> CD. And I don't know. I just think that's hilarious. And I, I, I just really like it. I think it's really funny. So yeah, yeah. I feel like most people are on team friends with benefits. I'm on no strings attached. I sort of have face blindness with this movies because I can't tell this one and the other one apart. <laughs> <laughs> I've like watched them. I can't remember anything of them because I haven't rewatched them. Uh-huh. And you know, but you know, if it works for you, it works for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. And like I said, my favorite part is that yeah. album. I think it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I like uh, the chemistry between uh, Natalie Portman and Ashton Kutcher. I would never oh. think in a million years to put them together. Yeah, I don't but... like Ashton Kutcher. I, I can't yeah. like, oh, it's terrible for me to say, but I just don't understand him. <laughs> As an actor, like maybe yeah. it just doesn't, you know. I guess because I be... liked that '70s show. I was. Oh, uh, I did too, enjoy... but like he was not my favorite. <laughs> I liked everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think he's like a great thespian or something. No, and I would never I think to put these two together. But I don't know. It works. I think it works. So yeah, you have to. If you're listening, you have to let us know which team yeah. you're on. Uh, Friends well, of Benefits. But nobody's or sick a... in this one, correct? So that's a that's a plus. That's I true. Think and yeah. Hathaway is sick at the other one, right? So no, I, it's um, friends with benefits. That's Mila no, Kunis and Justin oh. Timberlake. Oh my gosh! No, that one's a drama. Now I'm thinking of the other one with uh, uh, Anne Hathaway and what's his face. When, oh, uh, there's three of them mixing up in here. Okay, I have to find this to all of them. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my bad. Sorry. Uh, uh, what do you have next? <laughs> okay, so we're at nine, right? I have think yeah. like a man. Um, okay, this, I've never seen oh, this. Yeah, this stars so many people. I recently rewatched it uh, just to make sure it fell into that rom com category, and it does. It's like a, a group of guys, like Kevin Hart uh, and um, who else is in it? So many people. Uh, Terrence Jenkins, and they're all friends, and they all have these relationships. They, they have their ups and downs. These relationships, they're not really working out, and uh-huh. so all their all their women in their life or potential women in their life. Start buying this book by Steve Harvey. <laughs> yeah, which he plays like a real himself book in the that movie. He wrote. Yeah, it's like, like a man, and you know he's playing himself, and it's just like these the scenes of these women rushing out to buy his book, and then the men discover this book that they're being played, and one's a mama's boy, and one's an eternal. You know, he's old, but he still acts like he's in college. And Kevin Hart is so funny because he narrates the whole movie and. Throughout the whole movie, he's so happy to get divorced, but then he's crying at the end because he wants to uh, get back together with his wife. So he has the lesser part of the of the movie, but like the cameo of who his wife is, I think is brilliant. There's so many people in this movie that just pop up. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It works. It's funny, and uh, yeah, I've never seen it, but yeah, uh, it's on it Netflix. Out. I think it's worth a watch. You mm-hmm. know, yeah, and uh, it. But there's a lot of things you agree with, like, yeah, like, maybe this. <laughs> it's, only, it's, it's like, it's all pro doing this. And then it's like, how dare these women do that? But when they start, you know, acting this way to, like, try to get their revenge on the women, they do improve their lives. So it works yeah. in a way. So, you know, I just love how Steve Harvey is, like, just playing himself. He's yeah. got, like, a chapter. He, like, He's just standing there and goes, well, this chapter is the, you know, and explains it. And it's so funny the way they yeah. do it. So, yeah. Well, my number nine is one I know you're not a big fan of, but I love it. It's um, Midnight in Paris is my number yeah. nine. It's my favorite Woody Allen movie. And uh, I, I, I really love it for sort of the thought experiment that it has of this idea of how we sometimes look back at the past and think oh boy they had it great and we suck now and and that's kind of what his character Owen Wilson's character has done is 
is he's looked back at like the 20s and 30, 30s, particularly Paris, right. and he idolizes the, you know, sort of the, the, the titans of that era. And, uh, and he, so one night in Paris, he's, he gets the chance to go back in time. And it, what's interesting is that Marion Cotillard's character, who he meets, Adriana, she, is doing the exact same thing that he's doing, but with like the late 19th century, uh, like the Rembrandts and the, you know, like that era. And, and he can't believe it. He's like, you're living in the greatest time. How can you be doing that? And I think that's, that's like very fascinating that we do that. Uh, and uh, it's got such, uh, it's so fun in my opinion to see like Corey Stoll's Ernest Hemingway, Tom Middleston, F. Scott Fitzgerald, your Kathy Bates playing Gertrude Stein. Like that is just a blast. Uh, a, a Adrian Brody, Salvador Dali. Uh, I I love Michael Sheen as like the pedantic professor. Like, oh yes, so He's funny. So um, I I just I just really love it. I think it's oh. I think it's smart. I think it's funny. It's beautifully filmed. It captures Paris. It never looked better. You never wanted to go. I've never been to Paris, but yeah. I never wanted to go more than watching this movie. And uh, and. I, I think that uh, it it's I guess I like it uh, as my favorite Woody Allen because it doesn't have him in it or and like as far as like the Woody Allen archetype I think the the Owen Wilson is one of the more um, palatable versions of that archetype right. for me uh, but uh, yeah I just think it's it's a really <laughs> really fun film so i should give this movie um, another go but that's strong praise your favorite woody Allen. definitely yeah. more of this modern uh outputting i can see yeah. yeah yeah i just i really i really like it and uh in some of his other movies i respect more than right. i love like something like an annie hall i respect it i understand its importance but i don't love it right. uh but uh but anyway so that's where i have at nine uh what do you have next uh at Huh. At number eight, I have Isn't It Romantic? Um, oh, yeah, again, yeah. like we talked so about, it's really funny. And they even have a musical number. Yeah. And it's great. <laughs> I'm in PG-13. Uh, <laughs> my number eight is a movie that I have to admit for a while. It was like, it's so overrated because people were like, really were high on this movie. But like, once I kind of came down, I was like, you know what? It actually is really good but it, it's um it's to all the boys i've loved before um this is very sweet little movie uh about this girl who uh writes these love letters to her crushes and uh and one one day her sister is uh sends out the the letters uh and in the Busy book buddy. she does it because she's you know like mad which makes way right. more sense where in the she in the movie they try to pretend like she's doing it for as like a confidence boost that doesn't make any sense know. she's just a busy buddy yeah yeah <laughs> but um and i don't know why they cast janelle parish in this movie she looks way too old to be the <laughs> sister it makes no sense but is, anyway yeah. um and so but lana condor is absolutely adorable uh in this role and noah centineo is so charming and basically once he gets the letter they like make a a a fake dating pact and uh of course the longer they fake date the more they start to fall for each other and uh yeah it's just really it is really cute it's really cute are the sequels worth watching because i have not caught up with them I think so. A lot of people don't like the second one. Uh, and it's true that they are like ma- kind of have to, you know, manufacture conflict and whatever. But I I really appreciated the sequels. I thought they did a good job. I, I don't think we needed. There's kind of a love triangle introduced in the second one, which uh, I didn't really need. Um, but I'd say, yeah, I'd say the the sequels are both real solid. Uh, so uh, and I like the third one. Um, I, I it's probably one, three, two, but I I think it's it's a it's a good little franchise, and they have such nice chemistry. Uh, you know, Lar Jean and Peter, it, it, it's a great match. So, um, yeah, I'd say worth a watch. Definitely. 
So, I'll have to like I'll have to rewatch the whole trilogy, like maybe in the summertime, give it another go. Yeah, yeah I think so. Um, what do you have next? I have at seven, I have Love and Friendship, which uh, is an oh, adaptation yeah. of uh Jane Austen's Lady Susan, which she wrote, uh, it's part of her juvenilia. And this is a very funny and very charming. Yeah. It's definitely sort of got that independent feel, but it, it works because Lady Susan and Kate Beckinsale is so great as her. She's a lot. Yeah. This lady is a lot. Yeah. She's like a widow and she goes She's around. She's a villain. She's, She's a, a villain. villain. She always gets kicked out. Um, because, uh, you know, she overstays yeah. her welcome and she's always getting somebody else's man. You know, yeah. she's searching for her, her next suitor and she has an affair with, this, with her in-law's son and, yeah. and like who eventually falls for her daughter and it all works out. And, yeah. You know, she yeah. ends up trapping a man. But I love her conversations. Like Chloe Sevigny yeah. plays her like best friend. Oh, and, yeah. talk, and her husband is played by Stephen Fry. And he's yeah. like, he's like a complete idiot. It, it's so funny. And, and like Lady Susan, like you can't help but love her. You're like, yeah, she's a villain, but she makes it work. Like, yeah, <laughs> there's no repercussions. I love it. <laughs> I forgot fine. about that one, but I do love it. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, because there's great. a lot of matches, and there's a lot yeah. of matches that Lady Susan is a, you know, uh, mm-hmm. ew, almost yeah. ruining. I mean, yeah. the start of the movie, she's leaving, and the lady's crying because she almost stole somebody's husband. I mean, it's <laughs> the real romances, of course. Yeah, the genuine romance is the one that eventually develops between her daughter. Mm-hmm. And it's a yeah. little bit of a blow for her, but she bounces back by yeah. entrapping another man, and uh, so <laughs> it works. He's yeah, rich. I, it, he's it's, it's the thing is, is like I could see some people being like, "Oh, she's too unlikable as a character," but like she's the smartest person in the room at Absolutely. all times. She, at all times, yeah. she's right. Even when it looks like it's not going yeah. her way, she's the smartest, and it really yeah. is a comedy. It's basically yeah. a comedy of errors. It's a comedy yeah. of horrible people that Jane Austen must have encountered those type of women yeah. all the time. So it's a little homage to them <laughs> of, of respect and disrespect at the same yeah. time. So. I mean, I don't know. The only thing that's confusing is I don't, I'd love to ask with Stillman someday why yeah. they named it Love and Friendship because it's actually based on Lady Susan. Yeah, not that on is Love and Friendship. I know. It, so it's it's strange but uh but uh because yeah, diehard jane austen fans i don't think would like get that no, at first no yeah I'm well not sure either. my next one is as if people a lot of times people ask me what is an underrated or you know lesser seen rom-com that they should check out and often the one that i push on people is a little movie called What If, and it's called the F word in uh, in England, in UK. <laughs> but, uh, I I just I think it's one that a lot of people haven't seen that I really like. I think it's really cute, and it 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 can be a bit frustrating because it's the uh, friends to lovers, and you see them all over the the they are the she he's in love with her, but uh, you know she's friend zoned him hard. And uh, and they just never they always miss each other's windows, uh, he, and uh, when they're available, they're never both available at the, at the same time. And and anyway, so you go back and forth. But I I, I really like uh, Daniel Radcliffe and Zoe uh, Kazan in this. I think they're cute, and uh, it has Megan Park of Hallmark fame and Adam Driver. And Mackenzie Davis and Adam Driver and Mackenzie Davis are great uh, supporting. Yeah. They're really fun as this sort of uh, cantankerous married couple that they're friends with. And uh, I just like it. I think it's under under underrated. People will check it out if you haven't seen yeah. it. Yeah. I don't think. I think I've seen a little bit of this movie, but not its entirety. And I, I just uh-huh. completely forgot about it. Yeah, I, I do think it's because this. These are like, oh, there's so many gems. There's so many forgotten gems. Yeah. Like once we start talking about it, all these movies pop up and you're like, oh, whatever. Yeah, it's true. Kind of that or whatever. Yeah. You, you just can't remember it at yeah. all. <laughs> um, and if people are looking to see it, it's on the Hoopla app, which is free library Great. app. Yes. So you can watch it for free uh, if people want. Um, what do you have next? I have a movie from 2012. Uh, it's a Danish film. Its English title is Love is All You Need. It stars Pierce Brosnan and whew, I don't even know if I can pronounce her name, but I think it's Trine uh, Die, Die Home. 
I, I'm probably I probably Uh butchered huh. her name. I apologize. She's a very recognizable face. She does a lot like a lot of British stuff. Yeah. But uh, this movie is half in English, half in Danish, and then half in Italian. Oh, Basically, interesting. uh, yeah, she plays Ida, and uh, she is going. Uh, she's she's going through breast cancer, and she's going through her treatment. And she comes home, and her husband is having an affair with his uh, coworker, and. She doesn't know what to do. Um, her uh, daughter is getting married in Italy. They're going to a villa of this, you know, guy. And <laughs> Pierce Brosnan happens to be that man. And he plays uh, Philip. It's so funny because <laughs> he speaks English through the entire movie because he lives and works there because he runs a fruit thing. But everybody else talks to him like in Danish or whatever. And he just answers back in English like everybody knows what he's saying. It's great. You know, <laughs> Um But uh, they, their meet, cute, their meet cute is at the airport. She crashes his car into him, and he's a cantankerous old man since his wife died, and he's yelling at her for being irresponsible. And she starts to cry, like "I'm sorry, my life is falling apart. And my daughter's getting married in Italy," and he goes, "Oh wait, my son's getting married in Italy. Oh, we're in law." <laughs> so they travel to this beautiful villa in Italy, where they, of course, fall in love. And his sister-in-law, his wife, his uh, wife's sister. So wants this man so bad. She tries so hard to get him at the villa, but he's intrigued by Ida and he starts to be a better man, you know? Yeah. And um, of course, something goes wrong with their, their children have a whole other side story. Something goes wrong there. So it separates them, but I think it's such a beautiful, there's a little bit of drama mixed into it, but I think it's such a beautiful, like, older, uh, like an older couple sort of r
on Randall Park is like, oh, what, where, what have I done? Where am I in? Like he's looking at so weird, but I, Yeah, you know, just it's when Keanu really good. Reeves comes out of there and no, at a no place, and you know, and the whole joke's like, you know, he's Asian, right? Which I just love. Uh, you know, it's it's a perfect stunt casting for that. For that. Yeah, that's And it's true. a lot of fun. Yeah, it's really, really funny. Uh, all right, what do you have next? Uh, five, right? I have Yeah. uh, the movie that started rom-coms at Netflix, the craze of it, because uh, Netflix has so many rom-coms, secret rom-coms from all over the world, but it's set it up. Yep, I have it at Um, five as well. yeah, I just, there's something, Glenn <laughs> Powell is so charming in this movie. oh my gosh. All of these people are horrible, Rachel. They are horrible individuals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I they're mean, this overworked. has got to be one of the most attractive casts in the history of Totally, movies. totally. I mean, absolutely bangers. You know, Zoe Douche, so Ty Diggs, it's so adorable. Lucy Liu. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it's like, they're overworked. They have terrible bosses and they just Yeah. plan their life and their love so they can get a couple of days off, you know? And it's so like, it's horrible, the whole situation. But I was like, I get you. I understand I why you did this, you know? Because, totally yeah oh, there are people I love who movies live like about this work too. and kind of analyzing Oh, totally. obsession Like, this works. and Yeah. and uh, and this does and we did it for on friendship we did a whole recap if some people Yeah. want to hear more of my thoughts on set it up uh, they should check that out uh but uh but yeah it's 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 really fun Yeah. I And feel like people have forgotten about it but it's really totally. good Yeah. Because I, I rewatched it just to make sure that I still liked it. And, and it's still yeah fun to this day. yeah Like, yeah it's like, who cares? These people are horrible, but I support them. But yeah it's a blessing, too, because this really. It came out at a time where the rom com like was death, you know, on death watch, yeah and it really like came back in a really good way. And it and rom coms have come back on streaming. Whatever you feel yeah about streaming, it's true the, the streaming has been good to the rom coms, and especially yeah at Netflix because if you want to watch a movie from any language, a rom com, like they're all hidden. There's like so many great. Italian, French, Turkish movies, the rom-coms from India, Bollywood, and whatnot. Like, you can find on Netflix. Yeah. And I, you know, so, and, and Yeah. probably some, and Hulu and all these other places that you can search for. So, Yeah. in one way, it's good about that. But, like, Yeah. it still holds up this movie. And Yeah. Glenn Powell, like, he looks like Gosh. a baby in this, but he's Wait still, till you like, see he's... Hitman when it comes. Oh. Yeah, that's I'm coming scary. to Netflix, too. Yeah, Woo. so... Yeah. I still have to watch it, the one he has with Sydney Sweeney. I missed that one in the theater. Oh, yeah. It's it's Yeah, not so, my favorite, but it, he is you know. beautiful in it. Yeah, So. I just want to watch it for him. Yeah, Like, yeah, because, I get you know, that. he's aging like fine wine. Um, Yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. well, Um. my number four is practically the only big budget rom-com in theaters that we got for about seven years. I mean, really, as far as like a big studio release, it's Crazy Rich Asians. Ah, And yeah. I, I, I mean, Henry Golding. Oh my gosh. Ah, made him a star. <laughs> yeah. I have this yet. Uh, Crazy Rich Ages is my number three. So, Okay. Yeah. 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 It's so funny. It's got all the vacation porn, rich people porn that you could want. Oh, geez. Uh, and so it's very escapist on those levels. I, I think that the dynamic between her and uh, Michelle Yeoh is, is really good Yeah. because like their, their characters both make sense. It makes sense why the mother would, she's not just sort of your cliche protective mother. No, yeah. He is, she He's going through it. Yeah. yeah i mean she's just worried that this whole life and this whole thing thing is like she saw how she was treated and how hard Yep. it was for her and let alone being from another country and another you know completely different how is this going to work and so like her perspective makes sense she's not just unreasonable and so that's why the ending scene when you have this mahjong game between the two of them And basically she proves her Her worth, fortitude yeah, her. and worth Yep. and, and everything. And so that's so well written, so well done. And uh, of course, Aquafina is hilarious in Totally. this movie. That And wedding, uh, though, where they're walking oh, in water. Oh, unbelievable. my gosh. And I Unbelievable. know a lot of, I can't believe it, but there was criticism about, you know, that it was just 
too much about rich people. It was like rich people porn or like the display of wealth was disgusting. And I was like, I'd rather watch that than like somebody struggling to pay bills or fold their Yeah. laundry. I'd do that as is. I don't Yeah. want to watch Yeah. I mean, a movie like that. like, both It's of them escapism. can be done well. Like, I loved Yeah. the movie last year called Fallen Leafs, Right. uh, at least, uh, two grocery workers. And, um, you know, so it can be, it can be done well, but, Not but, that serious, but, guys. but <laughs> yeah. this is, this is escapist, fun, uh, well done and Totally. beautiful people. Got and an all Asian cast, very important yeah because it was yeah the first like first big one studio to joy movie. luck club And I love Joy Luck Club. And yeah guys, we're getting a sequel. But anyway, um I'm so excited, Rachel, because I love yeah the book and I love that movie. <laughs> yeah Um but um I just wonder if we'll ever get to see because they were the because sequels this movie made so much money. Are they going to actually ever do the two books? It's been I think it's well, this too came late out it's I too I don't late. know This how came I mean out what unless 2018? you recast Yeah, it's 2018, and it's like, I think they waited too long. And Yeah, it's I think it they boggles did too. my mind that they couldn't get it together, Yeah, you know, to make I, those sequels to I, I, jump on I the really bandwagon. think that that I mean, you you could do a sequel, but Yeah, it it's wouldn't insane. be the books. It's like what? It's like It wouldn't seven. be the books. By the time that comes out, it'll Yeah, be almost it's just ten because years. John Chu got like busy making musicals, and uh, and so I don't know. That they didn't I, make this, it's sad because they didn't make it a priority to at yeah. least get the second book. Now, I've never read the book, so I don't know where it goes from there. But I know there's a lot, there's more storyline. And it's hinted in the movie, too, with the cousin. And Yeah. I would Right. have just loved to see this world again, you know, Yeah, and I'm me sad too. that we, we don't get. But if this is it, this is still a good movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what do you have next? You Uh, have... number four, I have Always Be My Baby. Uh, always Oh. be my baby. I'm sorry, Yeah. not always be my baby. <laughs> That's a different yeah, movie. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No. Watching uh, Keanu so Reeves fun. great. You know, So Ali fun. Wong is great in this Yeah. one. Yeah. Well, my number three is a bit of an unorthodox pick, but we talked about it and we agreed. Um, it is a, uh, what they call pro shot filmed play. Uh, and it is, she loves me. And Yeah. it's one of my favorite uh, musicals. Uh, just, I absolutely love it. And it is so well done. This is so charming. It's, it's the perfumery story. It's even set in a perfume store. Uh, and it's the, if people don't know what that is, the perfumery story is the original play that then they base shop around the corner. And then Yep. in, in the girl's summertime, you've got mail and, and everything off of. And, uh, so, um, yeah, it's, this is so well done. Uh, Zachary Levi and Laura Benanti, incredible chemistry. Uh, Jane Krakowski is really fun as one of the other, you know, store employees, Um, uh, and you know, the songs are so good. And I mean, I give it five stars on Letterboxd. It's one of my favorite musicals and it's one of my favorite movies. Like I just love it so much. So, and if people want to watch it, you can get Broadway HD and you just, I think they give like a seven day trial, then you can watch it and then, <laughs> and that's it because Yeah. <laughs> Watch pro it's shots. so good. They're so great. It's filmed. It counts. It's Yeah. a movie. And it was only, I mean, it's such a Plays blessing the theaters that it was as well. filmed because it was Yeah. only on Broadway for like four months. Like it had Wow, a really, really? I didn't know yeah, that. it had Such the a limited, short run. it had a limited run, the revival. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, it's, uh, it's so neat that they recorded it because I would just be lost, you know, to, Totally. to time. And so I, I'm glad that they did. And uh, it's because not that many people got to see it, but now everybody gets to see it and it's so good. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarky Smart Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies 
or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. You have next. So you so have Crazy Rich Asians, right? I have Crazy Rich Asians. Okay. Oh, yes. Crazy Rich Asians. Well, my number two is when we talked about uh, on the indie episode uh, and, and also in the musical, modern musical episode. So we talked about it a bit, but uh, I have Sing Street at number two. It's one of my favorite movies. I absolutely just love it. I love the relationship between the two brothers yeah. and uh, and how that builds over the course of the movie. And I love the, he starts this band to- <laughs> Just for uh, the girl. Yeah. For this girl. You want to be in my music video for my band? Uh, <laughs> I don't have a band. You know, it's just charming. And I love the songs and- uh, I even love the ending when they're driving out into the bay. Yeah, will they make <laughs> it? You know, who knows? Of course uh, they will. They're going to be amazing. And I know because uh, they are so hopeful in like yes. sort of, especially because his family is like bleak. His well, older and, brother had dreams and yeah. hasn't and, really lived up to it. His parents are a mess, uh-huh. you know, so. And I mean, John Carney is just such a, like a hopeful filmmaker. Totally. His, yeah. And uh, so it's, it's a favorite. And I, I, I just wish that it's so, un- it's so unlucky because it, you know, it, it came out, it was the, like maybe the last or one of the last movies to yeah. have executive produced by Harvey Weinstein, even though he probably did hardly anything, but just, um, it it, because of like that, that, that yeah. it, it, it didn't get the promotion that it, uh, deserved to get yeah. and it didn't get the Oscar campaign that it deserved to get and so they nominated a song about a chair instead of any of the songs <laughs> I love you never, sting but yes that chair I will never forgive rough. the academy for that one uh but uh but yeah it's uh it's it's an absolute it is delightful I love it so what do you what do you have it to I have, we talked about this before with the Jane Austen, uh, but I love Aisha, which is a yes. modern day Bollywood version of Emma. It's it so is good. so delightful. It is yeah. so fun. It's on Hulu. Don't be afraid of subtitles. Yes. Um, but it's just, it's delightful. The cast is great. They do such a great job doing it in modern day. And it is yeah. really nice to see um, like other countries, other country, uh, other cultures that you are not familiar with, like adapt some of your favorite stuff. Yeah, and I always love that. I always love to experience new things and see how other people view it, and it's it's delightful. It yeah. really is. It really, it it really is. People should yeah. definitely check it out. Yeah, we've gushed about it before. Check it yeah. out. <laughs> well, my number one is one of my favorite movies. It's one of my favorite Disney movies. Uh, it'd be my top five Disney movies uh, ever. Um, it's tangled. I I've said for a long time that I think it's the first real romantic comedy that Disney ever made. Uh-huh. Um, cause most of the time the love interests are, are like not there in that much, you know, of the movie. Uh, I mean, with the exception of maybe Aladdin, you know, they're, they're, they're together a bit, um, and have, you know, banter back and forth, but, uh, but it, most of the, most of the princess type stories, they're, just not together that much for the movie Um, but this one they spend pretty much the whole movie together and there's lots of banter between the two of them and they're both like incredibly charismatic and wonderful and you love Rapunzel as she's going on this this journey to find herself and I love that whole scene when she's like I'm the worst daughter in the world this is the best day of my life you know it's so funny and the band and and, and the Vikings that they encounter yeah that's so funny (laughs) we we don't like your dream <laughs> your dream oh and the and the your candles in the air yeah like they, yeah. that's so beautifully animated Rachel this is also my number one yeah. and it's th- so funny because the first time I watched this movie I came late to it I didn't like it I was like yeah. I'm not too too good on I said I don't really like the animation I was like eh. oh. and the second time I watched it I was like what was I thinking this one is good <laughs> like it really I needed a second yeah. watch to appreciate yeah. it but it's so much fun and it's kind of Max, different for horse. Disney. Yeah. Max. And I can't believe that, you know, the sequel cartoon that they made for Disney was good. Yeah, it's true. It Like, if you get Agreed. to check that out, it's actually good. Yeah. You know, that they continue, they came back to do the voices. I mean, it's actually good and it takes place yeah. in that time. And listen, 
they're united uh, at Elsa's coronation in Frozen. They've yeah. got like a cameo yeah. in that. So they it's do. canon. <laughs> yeah, they're they connected. do. But this and is delightful. This yeah, movie is delightful. It's, it's, I agree with you on everything. Yeah, it's so good. And I, I love the fact that she immediately accepts Eugene. I oh, like totally. <laughs> way better than, than Flynn Rider. And that's, it's so sweet. And uh, ah. Mother Gothel is just one of the best villains that one of the best they've ever totally. had. And it's our last villain that we really had from Disney, like a real True blue villain. Yeah, yeah. Like without a stupid backstory, like, oh, the, this is why. Yeah. And that, and because <sighs> they've been doing generational trauma for the last, you know, decade or so. <laughs> for real. Yeah. And uh, so, and this is generational trauma, but like, but she's completely selfish. There's no, yeah, no tragic backstory or anything like that. And, uh, and she's just absolutely great. Donna Murphy and those vocals, Mother Knows Best. Oh, oh, so great. Yeah. So good. Guys, the hair <laughs> is animated so beautifully in this movie. I, I forget like, which, um, which Star Trek movie Donna Murphy's on. Uh, it's the one where there's like the, the commune. Uh, anyway, and uh, and uh, it's I'm like I I have a, such a hard time accepting her as like a, <laughs> a normal person because it's like Mother Gothel's in the movie. <laughs> but uh, um, but but yeah, it it's it's just so it's good. And delightful. I when I went to see, it, I was kind of off Disney for I mean aside from Pixar, I yeah for like a dick because I oh, was yeah. very disappointed by Princess and the Frog. I didn't I didn't like that. And no. when they advertised it, they they were really focusing on Flynn uh, in the oh yes, I remember that like. And uh, and and it just made it look very Shrekky and very like. And I was like, oh, wow, this is gonna such be a terrible. nice. And it's a nice it, spin on Rapunzel too. Yeah, and so then like, I, really but I took my sister because I have a sister that's eighteen years younger than me, and uh, and so I took my sister, and uh, I was just like, wow, this was so good. So it really kind of brought me back into the Disney fold uh, for a while there. Now they need to win me Mother back Gothel, again. <laughs> yeah, is such a great villain. Yeah, that uh, she even saved half of season seven of Once Upon a Time. Yeah, who was also because that show loved to redeem their villains, but she was yeah. a villain through and through, no redeeming there. Yeah. And season seven was a mess, but she was yeah. a great villain, <laughs> so that translated well. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I can't get over how good the hair looks. There's three movies where it's Tangled, it's Brave, and it's yeah. Encanto that has the best hair. Uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, animated hair. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean they spent so much money so, on the hair i forget what it was but it yeah was, it's it's like it was extremely expensive yeah. that hair but uh but yeah i uh, it's 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 just a great great it's movie great. and it it's, definitely is a rom-com if people yeah. Mandy don't think of it so but they perfect should. As yeah the, oh sure look at all the things that they she goes through with flynn yeah. and you know mm -hmm. and all this other stuff that they have to do and yeah. getting out of the tower yeah. <laughs> and the horse and the and, yeah. you know our little friend i forgot what her friend's <laughs> name is yeah you know what would be uh, fun to do is a uh, is a ranking of we should rank the seasons of Once Upon a Time. I mean, I think job. all of us would have. Oh my gosh, the lowest, but but that would be a fun. That'd be a fun ranking. It's one of my favorite shows yeah, ever. Good, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. tough. Yeah, <laughs> we did an episode on Once Upon a Time years ago, like in. 2018 i think uh but uh but it's been a bit i, since I we still dream that it. they'll just they'll do a movie on disney plus like what are what are what are my hook and emma up to yeah you know that would be fun we'll get season seven it didn't happen but i don't so. even i just don't trust disney right now i don't oh, even no. want them to touch it leave it alone no, don't. <laughs> no but disney ruin plus it. is working on a very i forgot what it's called but it's very similar it is a sort of once upon a time another version of it uh, with another suck. name they just, I, I just, don't... they need to win me back. I need another Tangled <laughs> in my life. They need to win me back. It's, it's, because... You know, it goes to, that's another thing too. Like it can happen because Tangled sort of really brought the Disney films yeah. back and we had they a good really run did. starting from Tangled and, yeah. and so, so there's a lot of ups, ups and downs with Disney animated, yeah. but yeah. like check out Tangled. I mean, it won. We both got yeah. it won. Rachel, I had completely forgotten it. I didn't even think of animation until you mentioned it. And I was like, yes, my number one. I knew automatically you were number one. I was like, but I would I agree with you, Rachel. It's the best of the era. You know, yeah. and it still holds up and it's, you know. 
Well, that's real quick. Uh, the patrons, um, Becky Shumner, she says the big sick, which we neither of us had on our list, but I do like. Um, I do, yeah. Also, abs- I absolutely adore Easy A. I've watched it countless times. That's a fun. I like it. Um, and then I asked on Twitter and they said... Um, we have Allison Lewis. She says, uh, Tangled, Crazy Rich Asians, Just Right to All the Boys I've Loved Before, Leap Year. And then oh, yeah. she has Life as We Know It, Letters to Juliet, Before We Go, Warm Bodies, which a number of people suggested, Valentine's Day, When in Rome, Austin Land, The Switch. And uh, and then uh, Ann Scott, she says, uh, Crazy Stupid Love, which I do, that would have been an honorable mention. I do like that. Uh, it's a little, I think, a little too long. Uh, and no, I have no memory of it. I know I've seen it. <laughs> I think it, yeah. I kind of wish that it, it just focused on the Ryan Gosling M. Stone. Yeah, I but... can only retain so much. My useless knowledge goes too long. <laughs> only goes um, up to a certain level. Always Be My Maybe, To All the Boys I Loved Before, and Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, the Girly Nerd has Austin Land, uh, Love Rosie, Crazy Rich Asians, Always Be My Maybe, The Big Sick uh aloha i'm i'm the only one who likes this one yeah i think (laughs) that's accurate um wild mountain time which is bonkers that movie is crazy uh but i'm gonna be you know where you go have it on your have it on your list um magic in the moonlight yeah well wild mountain time i i don't i wouldn't think of it as a rom-com no yeah but uh but it's bonkers that's it's for bonkers, sure it's right. crazy <laughs> um so way to have that on your list um and then michelle benson has silver linings playbook which would have been an honor mention for me um warm bodies crazy stupid love and friends with benefits yeah. so there we go some of the other choices. thoughts so yeah let us know while well, i'll have the short list uh uh, link in the description if you want to share your picks what you think of our picks and also uh if you like make a video or do a blog post just tag us because we want to see what you pick and we would love that that would be really fun and uh terry where can people find you i am at flurry heaven on twitter great and you can find me at rachel's reviews all of our social media itunes youtube and on ron tomatoes and make sure you're following the podcast homeworkies pod homeworkies podcast all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which is the biggest way you can support us. And you can be a part of these uh, ranking episodes. And even you can have us rank your favorites, which is coming up for one of our patrons. So please check that out. And then we also have our a merch store which we have some new designs at the merch store i finally got it with it and got some new designs up so check that out uh, that would be really grateful and uh, thanks so much everybody i uh, will talk to y'all later bye bye